Hey folks, it's Fernando doing another video for the More Survivalist and this is going to be an EDC update with a twist. This is actually the EDC I took to a recent trip to Rome and Vatican City. Uh, we didn't take any uh, checking luggage, it was just what we took with us in the plane so I didn't have anything in terms of a folding knives, anything like that. We went very light so it was just a small suitcase and uh, a small bag. Um, let's start with some of the stuff that I had in my pockets. Well, I also had my First, the, the cell phone, I took my LG G6, which is a, a fantastic phone, I'm very happy with it. It has great cameras, both of these it came in very handy during the trip. Battery life, I needed to supplement it with that battery bank over there. But the, the phone in general just works very well, the LG G6, uh, it's a great model. Great pictures I took with it. I have the, the Spigen case, which is quite sturdy, didn't have anything serious in terms of drops or anything like that, but overall very happy with the phone. I also have one of these uh, tempered glass screen protectors good thing over there. Um, in terms of wallet, I took my one of my wallets, uh, This I took this one which has you know, cards in that, direct, in that uh, direction, also a pocket for coins. I also took a giveaway, throwaway wallet. And if you're not familiar with the concept is in case you get mugged at gunpoint, you give, you give away your wallet, which is your fake wallet with just, you know, phony uh, cards. What I did, uh, I wasn't expecting to get mugged at gunpoint in Rome, even though it, you know, I guess it's possible. But my concern mainly was uh, in some of these touristy crowded areas, if I needed to pay for something, maybe buy something to eat or, or whatever it is that I needed to pay for. If it's very crowded and I pulled out my wallet, I was, you know, mostly concerned if someone snatched my wallet ran with it, couldn't catch it, and you know, that, situ that, that kind of situation, that was what I had mostly in mind. Uh, so what I did was have a, a second throwaway wallet where I kept most uh, of, of my coins, a, a pile of coins which I use all the time. It's, this is actually the wallet I ended up bringing out the most. And a, a few just, you know, uh, still here, 15 bucks. In case something happened, I wasn't losing much. I wasn't losing my real wallet with the real important stuff that I kept there. Uh, sunglasses, my same old uh, Wiley X Valor, these are great and these go back to the concept of your EDC stuff being the stuff that you use for, for shooting, for traveling, it's the same stuff you use on a daily basis which these uh, sunglasses are and you know to just uh, you just take the same stuff that's already um, integrated to your daily normal lifestyle. Um, no folding knife, I did take my my keychain and what I did was this um, regulations here in Europe for the uh, pl planes traveling is that you can take a knife as long as it's under six centimeters under six centimeters is just a little bit over two inches so the PS4 was more than within that that limit so I removed the mini champ so as we have the pliers as well I removed the mini champ and that little pry bar and it took uh, a little bit of a larger pry bar which I took this one instead and the PS4. Uh, it's nice to be able to fly with a, at least some basic tools that I ended up using the knife a couple times and this was more than enough really as it usually is with these things you don't really need for you know, most of this is stuff you can just get away with having a, a little bit of a smaller knife. A Kleenex, a couple there. I also took a, a flashlight, the Through Night, um, Through Night T10T with a whistle. This has the 14500 lithium battery, which is rechargeable. This was more than enough for the trip. And I actually ended up using this once or twice or maybe a little bit more, two, three times probably. Um, Rome is a fantastic city, it's beautiful and especially at night and sometimes walking back to the hotel it gets a little bit darker in some corners and you know just have your flashlight you illuminate and you see and just comes in handy so always have a flashlight with you. I had of course my keychain, a spare one there as well. Uh, one of the things I, I experiment with in this trip was I took my Glock hat. I could have taken some other hat but I wanted to see what kind of feedback reactions I got and it has been extremely positive. Uh, one of the first things we did when we got there is visit uh, Vatican City and if you've ever been there, which you really should, it's a you know, 
one of the most impressive things I've, I've seen traveling in different parts of the world is you, you have two layers of, of security, right? And they're very serious about it. Vatican City is like the, the holy grail of, uh, of targets for Islamic terrorism. I mean, they, they would love to blow up that place. Everyone knows that because it's a symbol of, you know, you know, of what it is, right? So security is pretty tight and they don't mess around. There's two layers. The first one, it's um, the guy that was in, in, right in front of us. They, they don't allow selfie sticks in. They have signs that say they don't. And the guy in front of us in his backpack, which the Italian police uh, officer was going through, he found one and he said, you know, no, you cannot bring this in, see a sign, not allowed. And the guy was like, please, my selfie stick, and, and the, 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 the cop was having none of that. He said, you know, you can stay here with your stick or can, you can throw it away, whatever you want, you're not bringing it in. So they don't screw around, they're pretty serious with it. Now, when I got, when it was my turn, I had my uh, Glock hat, I had my 5'11 tactical light shorts, and... <laughs> And I saw that I, I was also eating, I had bought a, an, an ice cream and the guy looked at me, he, his eyes went to the hat and you know, it's maybe it's also about the, the body language that you have, the, the attitude. I, I gave you know, my best Italian greeting, buongiorno there and, um, and, and smiling, look, looking comfortable. The guy said, oh, is the ice cream any good? And he said, yeah, it's actually great. And he said, okay, go on. <laughs> Just waved me through without checking my bags, without checking anything. And, and my son, my oldest son was right at, right behind me and he stopped my son and he started, you know, let me take a look at your bag. And I turned around and I said, oh no, it's okay, he's my son. And the guy went, okay, no, no problem, go through. And my, my kids were like, what, the, do you know the guy? No, absolutely no. But what I believe is, it, it's, it, it was one of these positive profiling things. Uh, sometimes it's really not that bad to look like, a, you know, like-minded gun kind of guy if you don't look like a creep you know it's not just having the, the little hat it's also about how you you handle yourself how you talk how you express yourself if you look comfortable friendly these guys are used to doing this all day long year round they know what they're doing and i could tell because no one else was getting waved through security like i was now the crazy thing and i'm not making any of this stuff up on the second checkpoint they have metal detectors I left my bag, putting it through the metal detector stuff. I took a couple steps and I forgot about my belt, right? I was taking this belt. Again, same thing, right? Uh, of course, it went off and I was removing my belt so as to put it through the, the, the scanner and the exact same thing happened. The, the officer took a look at me, saw the hat, saw the belt, and he said, like, no, don't worry, go through. It's not, not a problem. He just waved me through. They, they know. They see certain things about you and they realize that, you know, um, most other people, they, they just got the, you know, more detailed... Uh, inspection kind of kind of thing and it was the same thing all the entire trip any security uh, points you know any any checkpoint or security spot you know visiting different places it was the same thing the the hat especially I could see their eyes especially with, with cops you could see their eyes going to the Glock hat and if you had a friendly attitude they had one as well and usually it was uh, very very positive throughout the entire trip. So that's something else to keep in mind. One of the things I bought as soon as I got to the airport was a little Italian Spanish uh, manual and your touristy guide which came in handy as well. Now during the flights, it's just a couple hours flight, I went through the book and believe it or not it was enough to, when, when we got to Rome, uh, it was enough to have some uh, a good conversation with a taxi driver. We talked about politics, we talked about immigration, we talked about nice places to visit in Rome, uh, crappy parts to avoid. And when we got to the, the hotel, my youngest son was like, Dad, you learned Italian in two hours? No, it's not that I learned Italian in two hours. It's that, um, especially if you're from Argentina, it's, uh, Argentina is half 
uh, Spanish immigrants, half Italian immigrants. Argentina has a kind of a crappy reputation in Latin America because they say that Argentines believe themselves to be Europeans. It's not that we believe ourselves to be Europeans, it's just that most of, uh, mo for most of us, either our parents or our grandparents are in fact Italians or Spanish. And uh, because of that, there's a lot of the way in which we speak Spanish that sounds Italianish. There's a lot of slang used in Argentina that is actually Italian. So a lot of it is very familiar. Even the way we speak using our hands and kind of loud, that's very Italian. And it's just, you know, part of the culture that just, you know, happens to be that way. Uh, battery bank, this one. There's other ones, you know, there's going to be leaving a link below if, if you haven't got one of these already because they're very useful especially if we're going to be taking pictures all day long like a, like it was because you really kind of cannot avoid that in in such a place so these are very handy i had my charger as well which the cable works there as well uh, a couple pens including a fisher pen you know better than any tactical pen especially with a tsa in america it can give you a little bit of problems i've heard some horror stories of people having problems because of tactical pens being considered weapons Weapons. just a Fisher space pen it's solid enough it's a rod of steel so you know kind of does the same thing a little bit of 550 paracord took one of the soaps from the hotel so it's gonna have a small one I didn't take some of my fancier lighters because I had problems in the past uh, had to leave behind the the insert from my Zippo in, in during a once in, in a security uh, spot in a little bit of duct tape First aid kit, nothing too fancy, just a few, you know, aspirin, ibuprofen pills, that sort of thing, basic stuff. Sunscreen is very much mandatory, especially if you're going to be walking all day long. We walked like crazy, 20, uh, 20 25 kilometers, what is like 15, 20 miles a day, easily. We walked all day long, tired, and yes, you have to have something for the sun. Hand sanitizer. Uh, yes, makes a lot of sense touching all stuff. You know, it's a good idea. I took a poncho just in case. It didn't actually rain, but we were expecting rain. So I, I took it with me. It's a good idea, but fortunately I didn't have to use it. Water, instead of taking a nicer metal water, which just in case I had problems with at the airport, it didn't seem to be that way because people had them all over. But I just bought one of these over there and just kept on refilling it. One of the nice things about Rome is that all over Rome you have these fountains where you can drink the water and it's very fresh and it actually tastes great. Some of the best tasting water for some reason. So you would be refilling this all over. Actually the last time I refilled this one was it's in St. Peter's Square in the fountain over there. So I'm going to be keeping maybe this as a memento of some kind. Um, what else? I had a little note pad for information that I wanted to keep there available and I took this big well not so big I this um, especially because I was expecting rain this is very much waterproof so it's about the size that I wanted not too big rugged very solid and that bright red color makes it very visible so I should not forget it and just keep it in mind all the time so that that's what I took for a trip and finally my watch would be my same old Casio Pro Trek watch, which I usually have with me as well. Guys, that's been all. I hope you enjoyed this bit, little video. Oh, the uh, keys were kept in the pouch where I have my headphones that allow to be used as an antenna for the FM radio built in in the cell phone. If all hope is lost and there's no data, nor, no, nor inter internet, nor anything, you can use this as an FM radio with the cell phone. Guys, that's been all. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Take care. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up if you liked it. See you on our next video. Have a great day.